Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on China's television. I'm Sean Wakimalo in Abuja. So we have some stories that we need to bring you up to speed on and get some reactions on what is happening. One on the governorship election, we've seen some violence already happening. There was a town hall organized by China's television and Kempa Development Initiative uh, on Sunday, hammering on the need for security and the need for stakeholders to ensure that lives and properties are secured. But in Kogi State, it seems to be a trend of violence that we've seen over the past few days. Tonight, we'll be analyzing some of these issues and what could have been caused. A major player in that game who is laying claims to the fact that there is a plan to kill him will be speaking to us tonight on the program. Plus, in organized labor, is ready for a showdown against government. And they said this time around, it will be total. And they will shut down the entire space if their demands are not met. We'll be hearing from the labor leaders tonight also on the program. So stick around with me. Let me bring you up to speed on your political roundup stories. The House of Representatives is calling for the revisitation of the report of the 9th House of Representatives Special Committee on National Security with a view to addressing the security situation in the country. The House is calling for a review of the document and full implementation of its recommendations by the executive. This follows a motion by Honorable Abdul Samad Dasuki raising concerns that critical and urgent interventions, as indicated by the committee's summit findings, are essential to address these security issues, prevent further escalation of violence and instability in the region, and safeguard the lives and assets of the communities. The president of the Center for Social Legal Studies, Professor Yemi Akinshaya George, has described lack of effective pretrial case management as a cause of delay in Nigeria's criminal justice system. Professor George, who was speaking at a parley organized by the Public and Private Development Center on the administration of criminal justice in Nigeria in Abuja, notes that the criminal justice system has not been able to expeditiously deliver justice due to indefinite delay in case management, as over 70% of persons in detention are still awaiting trial. The Kogi State Governorship candidate of the Action Alliance, Mr. Olayinka Braimo, is advocating the implementation of regenerative agriculture as a permanent solution to conflicts between farmers and herders, which he blames on resource control. Mr. Braimo disclosed this as part of his STAT agenda at an engagement with farming communities in Ijumu local government area of Kogi State. A group of elders and youth from Oweri Zone in Imo State have slammed the Nigerian police and the Imo State government for the treatment meted on the NLC president, Joe Ajero, recently. Addressing a news conference in Oweri, the Imo State capital, the group says there's no justifiable cause for anyone to treat the NLC president in that manner, especially when he's fighting for a just cause. The group calls on the Imo State government to tender an unreserved apology to the NLC president. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's uh, get you to perhaps the biggest stories grabbing the headlines today in the country as we speak. And that is the fact that the organized labor, the Trade Union Congress and the Nigerian Labor Congress, after what they call an extraordinary executive meeting today in Abuja, have decided to embark on a nationwide total strike from the 14th of November 2023, that is next week, Tuesday. The meeting follows uh, on the deliberation they had after they made their demands on the federal government to react and uh, speak up on what happened to their leader, the NLC president, Mr. Joe Ajero, when the NLC went for uh, uh, a protest in Imo State. They described the action as barbaric and unacceptable. The two labor union organizations today, after their meeting, said they will ensure a total shutdown of activities and withdraw their officers from engaging in any services across the country. By the way, they've made some far-reaching decisions, which also include uh, a deliberation and an agreement that to order the immediate withdrawal of services and shutdown of Imo State beginning midnight today, and that if demands are not met, workers all over the Federation 
will join in withdrawing their services by midnight on Tuesday next week. And they said now that all state councils of NLC and TUC and affiliates are by this resolution mandated to ensure full compliance with that decision. I'm now being joined tonight on the program of one of the leaders of Nigeria's organized labor, the TUC President, Trade Union Congress, Comrade Festus. Sifo, thank you so much, Comrade, for joining us tonight. Thank you so much, Shehu. Uh, good evening and good evening, viewers. Strike again. It seems to be one song that the Labour sings very well. Uh, yes, um, Shehu, um, you know, today we had a uh, meeting, just as you read out, uh, the meeting of um, at the NLC and TUC, the NEC meeting. So we, we called the meeting in order to appraise what happened in Oweri last week. So, and you know, we are leaders, we listen to the people. So when you call meetings, this, I mean, this particular meeting was a meeting that was attended by close to 200, uh, even much more than 200 uh, participants. And at the end of the day, um, the neck of both organs felt that the right thing to be done is, first of all, um, effective this night, we are, uh, we are going to start uh, withdrawal of service across, you know, in, in Imo. We'll, we'll start both flight operations, uh, we'll go ahead with... Uh, Electricity, we go ahead with um, with supply of electricity PMS. Electricity has been impacted since last week already. Uh, yes, yes, of course. But we are going to deepen it and we are going to take it further because for us, what was done in Imo State was barbaric. What was done in Imo State was fundamentally wrong against all norms and all principles. So for us, we say no, no, no. Uh, the question was that Joe Ajero went to Imo to do what? Did he go to Imo to further his personal interest? The answer clearly is a no. He went there to speak for those who could not speak for themselves. He went there to advocate for people who could not advocate for themselves. And at the end of the day, what happened turned out that way. For us, it is a no, no, no. So when we do that in Imo uh, tomorrow, uh, Thursday, Friday, and through the weekend, then we'll now get to uh, Monday, if the government, because we have asked some certain things that must be done. So if the government uh, refused to do those things, uh, then we are going to uh, call for a total shutdown of the nation effective Tuesday next week. What are those demands? Uh, yes, it's been, you know, last week we, we had a meeting. So the, the, the knack of, um, of both organs had some deliberations, the leadership, and we looked at it. That first of all, uh, those that brutalized Joe Ajeru was led by the commissioner of police. Then, but the person who was in the field that was doing this was the area commander. So that area commander must be sacked. And at the end of the day, he must be prosecuted. Then all the police officers that perpetrated that act, they must be prosecuted. Then all the talks that were also involved, because the police, they knew the talks. They came with the talks. They all came together. So both the talks and the police, they must be arrested. All of this must be prosecuted. at the Labour yes. House in Imo. Uh, yes, correct. Okay, so correct. does the Labour have evidence, at least, to back up the claims? Ah, yes. There are, you know, um, the person that, thank God, the person that was brutalized is alive today. So Joachim Ro is alive today. In fact, if you ask some of the journalists that were there. The TVC reporter was there. I think Arash reporter was there. The television, uh, or rather the, the, the camera of the, these TV reporters, they confiscated them. In fact, that of uh, TVC, I think they even broke their camera in order for them to destroy evidence. So people were there. We have a lot of people that were there that witnessed this. In fact, we interviewed some of them today in our next meeting. They told us expressly what happened uh, to Joe Ajero and how it happened in order to corroborate what Joe Ajero uh, has said at all. So for us, it's completely unacceptable. Part of what uh, Mr. Ajero was heard saying is that he was actually beaten when he was taken into custody. Is that a case? Uh, yes. Uh, what he... exactly is the picture that was painted by Mr. Ajero and... Um, uh, those whom you interviewed today. Yes, Joachim was inside his car driving to that venue. So when, just before he got to that venue, he was accosted. So at the front, then some other people also came behind him. They brought him out from the car. They started the brutalization just before he entered into the labor house in Oweri. Then they brutalized him. Police now took him away. They took him into custody, and they continued the brutalization in their own custody. So for us, it's clearly unacceptable. I hope that Mr. Mm. Ajero is okay now. Uh, yes, he that, is. That, we thank God in all of this, that, that is, in all of this, this is important that yes, his life well. 
uh, is, is, is secured very and well. is in good health. Yeah, very well. Uh, he's getting medical treatment? Uh, yes, he's getting medical treatment. Because the last and, uh, time I spoke with him, yeah. he said his sight was bad uh, and yes. he couldn't uh, see very well. Yes. And yes. we could see the picture on the screen, yes. uh, his swollen face, which right. showed uh, some of those things that you have said. But yeah. the question is, um, there are circumstances surrounding the, the, the situation. Yes. Um, there was a subsisting court order which bars the NLC from staging a protest. Are okay. you aware? Ah, so, 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 um, when you have interim order, interim court order, <laughs> it doesn't last more than two weeks. So, this interim court order is not an interlocutory injunction. I'm not a lawyer, but from my understanding of the law, it is not a perpetual injunction that is there forever. No. This order came <laughs> more than one month ago, uh, so it's already expired. So it's an expired order. So for us, we have our lawyers, we spoke to our lawyers, and they told us that this particular order has expired. Are you aware that shortly mm. after this incident, there was a renewal at the court granted, renewed uh, its position on the order, restraining the NLC from carrying out no. any protest? When order? you have an order, when you have a valid order, a valid order must be served, right? It must be served. When you serve an order, there is a, a documentation of receipt. So we were not aware of any of this. It was later we now learned that the government was banditing uh, um, or brandishing an order here and there. But there was no order served on us. The only one that was served earlier on has expired. Mm. I mean, uh, of course, I mean, no one in his right thinking will see another human being being brutalized or being harassed or uh, assaulted in this manner, and we'll be happy. Um, when you say you're going on a nationwide strike over a situation that happened in Emo, is that fair? Uh, yes. So for us, uh, the point is this. Who is, um, if you look at the structure, if it was just uh, those talks that Hope Uzonima bandit around that did this, it would have been a bit different. But it's an institution of state. So the, the, the police, it's reporting to the, the president. The president is the commander in chief of the armed forces. So the inspector general of police reports to the president. So we need to do this in order to call the president to act. Because the things we have demanded, hope Uzodima cannot do them because he's an accomplice already. So all we are saying is that these are the things we want the government to do. That, so once the government does that, then we, there is no need for embarking on strike because these people, they are currently roaming the streets of Oweri and it is not acceptable. Uh, I mean, you can't have um, someone who is advocating for the Nigerian workers being brutalized the way he was brutalized and those people that brutalized him, we have their names, we know them. The government, I mean, the government also know these particular people and at the end of the day, they are going scot free. Uh, let's listen to the side of Governor Hope Uzodema. Uh, it does look like he also has his own explanation. Uh, when they met with the president at the presidential villa, the candidate of the APC, uh, Governor Hope Uzodema, was responding uh, to what happened. He says there was clear partisanship on the part of Mr. Joe Ajero. Take a listen to Governor Hope Uzodema. As an attempt to mix up partisan politics or an attempt to blackmail my government. But I can tell you that my people are already aware. That was why the Nigerian Labour Congress, Imo State Chapter, addressed a World Press Conference that what their national leadership is saying is not correct and that they are not going to do any strike or protest. And in the process, they decided to dissolve them, to put in a caretaker. Of course, I'm the chief security officer and I have a responsibility to intervene. What has happened is this ugly coincidence that the national lead chairman president of Nigerian Labour Congress is from Imo State and has not been able to demarcate the difference between being a national leader of an organization and then an interested party in local politics. That is a response of... Uh... Senator Hope was already my governor of Imo. So let me allow you to react to what he Yes, said. that is far from the truth, Sheo. Uh, the problem in Imo State actually started in 2020. Immediately, Hope Uzodima came to the saddle. In 2021, 
um, Joe Ajero Comrade was not the president of NLC. In 2021, the XY president of NLC, as mandated by the neck of NLC and TUC, they set up a body to go and intervene what was happening in Imo. Do you know who headed that intervention? Is the current pres uh, governor of Kebbi State, who was then the president of Nigeria Union of Teachers. So he led um, comrades. There. There was also the deputy president then of TUC, the secretary general of TUC, secretary general of NLC. They all went to IMO in 2021 in an attempt to resolve this issue. So this issue predated the administration of Joe Ajero. Joe Ajero became president of NLC in 2023, February. But this particular issue is an issue that has been on ground since 2021. So his colleague today is the governor of Kebi, he was the one that went there in an attempt to resolve it. If there was no issue, the war should ask hope who's a demand that he signed a communique, an agreement with labor just sometime around May. So has he implemented anything in that agreement? The answer clearly is a no. You know, in Nigeria, it's very easy to, for politicians to politicize everything. Joe Ajero was not in Imo for politics because there was no need for it. There were issues. There are people that were sacked that are not being paid. There are people as well in Imo that are, are, are being owed several months' salary. So, I mean, these were the issues. He said the Nigeria Labour Congress uh, in Nemo State uh, issued a statement. I, I think, uh, I don't know, politicians find it so easy to, to lie to the public. Um, what happened was that Hope Uzodima was trying to foster a candidate on NLC. NLC election that was to be done sometime in February. When that election was already planned, when Opusodima saw that the candidate he was sponsoring will lose the election, this was in February, they sent talks to the same secretariat to disrupt the election. When it was disrupted, what now happened was that NLC now set up a Ketika committee. And I could tell you that, I, I mean, the Ketika committee chairman was in our meeting today. He was in our meeting today. So yeah. the people he's talking about, we clearly don't know them. So let me, let me ask you, Mr. Joe Ajero is from Imo State. Correct. Mr. Joe Ajairo is the NLC president. All right. And the NLC is an affiliate of the Labour Party. Yes, the Labour Movement founded the Labour Party, correct. So in, in that sense, uh, the Labour Party and NLC worked together in the last 2023 election. Correct. In this sense, uh, election is coming about a week and there is planned protest in Imo last week. Mm. Uh, don't you think that may be suspect? Uh, you see, politicians... And with the I background mean, of the fact that Mr. Joe Ajairo, by himself, who is also from Imo State, is a member of the Labour Party by extension and goes on the ground uh, by himself to lead the protest. And the, the feelers that, uh, that there are um, bottled anger over the months... Uh, between Mr. Joe Ajero led NLC and the Imo state government, which culminated into the umpers that we saw that now boomerang into the attack and the assault on Mr. Joe Ajero. Uh, you don't think that that is suspect, that this is coming just before the election? Um, so that would have been correct if this issue was an issue that originated last week. If this issue was just the issue, I mean, was an issue that came up for the first time last week, or even one month ago, or even two months ago. But this particular issue we are talking about is something that has started since 2020, 2021. But the case is that, it, does, it not so make, now, does it not make hmm. Mr. Joe Ajero an interested party in the matter? No, there is, see, these issues are different. Okay, so let me, let me, let me, let me give you the background okay. again. The, the question I'm asking okay. uh, is the fact that Mr. Joe Ajero, an hmm. emo citizen, hmm. It's going to be uh, is for originally or uh, his origin is in Imo State uh, is of the Labour Party uh, and there is going to be an election and in that sense it's been seen as an interested party in the matter. Could it be possible that Mr. This particular protest and action could have been done after the election? Um, so you see the issue of. For example, the issue of the Naira redesign that happened. Let me just draw an analogy. So that particular issue, labor movement, we were at the saddle and at the vanguard trying to resolve that problem, even in the wake of the elections. So, Sheung, 
This particular subject, if you check the agreement that was signed by the Imo State governor, he himself, the SGF, signed the agreement on behalf of the Imo State government. So when you are mandated by your organ to act in, I mean, clearly, NLC, TUC, we are not sitting in the executive of Labour Party. Yeah, the fact that we founded the Labour Party, they have their different organs no, totally. I'm have not, you ever I'm, seen, I'm, I'm have you ever seen Joe Ajero or myself yeah. going to the campaign trade to campaign for any candidate? But no. the question is, because <laughs> he's an interested party, mm. based on the fact of the matter, is it, could it be possible that he did not by himself go on the ground physically to... Uh, lead this protest. He's the president of a congress. But he has he's the president of a congress. The, hold Even on, Mr. In that, Tuesday, okay. uh, he's the president. Yes. And I'm asking, is yes. an interested party in mm. the matter? Because of the interest, is it possible that he did not participate? He did not participate in what? In the protest that led to this. Because the clash is, yeah. there are those who believe mm -hmm. that, and you heard the governor who mm -hmm. said, this is a clear case of partisanship. Mm. That is, see, the government is just hiding under that to perpetrate what they perpetrated. Because at the end of the day, the issues are different. Like as I have said, the person that has led this issue before now, when Ayubawaba comrade was the president of NLC, is the current governor of Kebbi State. When he was leading it, why didn't they say it was partisan? Also, in that same state, you had the Secretary General of TUC that was also there leading the TUC. So is it, is it coincidence? Is it, is, it from co is it coincidence that this oh. protest is coming just before the election? We have had protests before. We've had strike in Imo. We've had strike since this year. We have had series of protests and series of strike in Imo, let, in let, Imo State. Let me, Sometime in May. We yeah. also had Let me show you the, the response okay. of the police on this matter. Uh, please put up the, the response of the police, which they gave in May. Um, uh, because part of the allegation was that uh, Mr. Joe Ajoro was abducted and uh, uh, was abducted. So they said they never arrested. They said it is pertinent to state that the NSC president was in a worry as part of arrangement of the Congress to mobilize workers for a mega protest rally in the state. Uh, they went further to say, in the course of their planning, it was reported that suggestions arose for the lockdown of some essential facilities, particularly the airport, which led to some workers and other individuals resisting the picketing process, leading to scuffles and heated arguments and an eventual attack on the person of the president by a mob. They went further in that statement to say, when they saw that all of these things, upon receiving the report, the Emo Police Command swiftly um, deployed police operatives to the scene and uh, uh, where the uh, uh, officer in charge ex um, um, exercised his operational discretion by taking the NSC president into protective custody at the state command headquarters to ensure the protection of his life and that and that he was not lynched in the scuffle that followed. That was the, immediate, that was the response of the police at the time. These are lies from the pit of hell. You know, in Nigeria, people concoct things and put things together. This is fallacious, and it is not true. Because we have people that were on ground, we have people that were there that clearly saw what happened. The same police, they were the ones that started beating Joe Ajero, and they also commissioned some mobs to beat him. Then in that process, they whisked him into their car, and they took him away. There was no point. Are, you had such altercation. The way the labor movement works, it's a command and control system. So it is not when the neck gives a direction, when the organs gives a direction, everybody must execute. Right. So there is nothing like that whatsoever. It is not correct. So to, to resolve this matter, because this is a stalemate, the lives and livelihood of a lot of people will be affected. And are those who believe that this might be an overkill. Because each time there is some kind of this to the labor threatening strike, and this is looking like an overkill for whatever that happened in one state of the federation, either the 36th and the FCT, the whole nation will be made to suffer just because of the altercation or the assault that happened in Amos, which is condemnable, the attack on the NLC president. But to finalize this conversation, of course, I would like, I mean, if you put up the the response of the Imo State government, because they had their own side of the story immediately that happened. Put it up, uh, my producer, so that uh, the viewers can see it. They said, we have no hand in Ajero's arrest. But on a final note, 
And this is going to be my last question to you and to say, going forward, what do you think is the way out? So, I mean, this strike action might be painful uh, and might, cause some, might, be it might have some impact on the economy. What do you think could be done to avert it? So the reason you give strike notice is to give the institution of state or if it's a company, the management of that company mm -hmm. an opportunity and a time frame to act. So we what are, we have done, we, are shutting we, down gave, today. we gave, we, we gave, are shutting the state down today. Yeah, that is the state. Uh, but that is the state. But for the nation, we are saying, if you remember last week, we said by Wednesday, right? So we have moved it again to say Tuesday next week. That will be almost two weeks. So what we expect the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to do is to set up a high-powered uh, inquiry into this problem is to come around and say, OK, uh, this police is suspended. This particular person that was involved is suspended. And that they are going to investigate. And the people that are involved, they must be prosecuted. So we must see that action. Because Hope Uzodima cannot take such action. It is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria who can commission the IGP to take such action. So when we see such actions are being taken, then we will examine our position. So what we have simply done is to give the time frame for government to act. We could have started the strike tomorrow morning, right? We could have started on Thursday. But as a responsible organization, we right. felt that let us still give a little time frame for, to, to call government to action. Because today is Joe Ajero. Tomorrow, nobody knows the person it could be. This is a, an, an absurdity. This is a, a... I mean, the entire Nigerian labor movement is being called to trial. And we will respond swiftly. Because Joe Ajero went there. He wasn't with a gun. He wasn't even with a knife. He wasn't even with a spoon or anything. There was no machete with him. He went there with his mouth to address the Nigerian workers and to protest. Protest is protected by our constitution, protected by all known international norms. So the fact is this. Even if, for example, Joe Jero was in Imo, for example, for politics, let's assume, does that call for Hope Uzodima to release his talks, to batter Joe Jero? What if he had died? So for us, we are responding strongly to this because it is highly condemnable. And we strongly believe that the entire Nigerians should also support us on this because Joe Jero has been a vanguard and a voice for the Nigerian masses. And we'll continuously be that. So our voice cannot be, cannot be uh, pushed aside just because of the fact that we have a governor in Imo who doesn't like the face of Joe Jero. And I will tell you, this is not partisan. There is nothing partisan about this. For us in labor movement, it is about the people, it is about the workers, and we'll continuously defend them no matter who's us is God. All right. The interest of the Nigerian people is also paramount. Thank you so much indeed, uh, Mr. Festus Osifo, the president of Pegasan and the TUC. Thank you so much indeed Thank for your you, time. Sir. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. We'll take a break, everyone. But when we return, our attention will be on Kogi, the violence that escalated. Perhaps. And uh, thinking about the Saturday's election and what security agencies need to be doing and doing fast. We're speaking with one of the top candidates in the race. All right, thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us on the program tonight. Let's switch our attention now for, to Kogi State. We're looking at the governorship race and, of course, what has been happening in the last few days. Yesterday was another... Uh, case of what the security agencies need perhaps to take a second look at the security situation between the social democratic party sdp and the all progressives congress apc in kogi said it's been some kind of bad blood between both parties and they have been at each other's neck for for some time and now this has led to yet another accusation and counter accusation over who did what and how it all happened. It was the Director General of the SDP governorship can, uh, campaign in, uh, in Kogi State who was said to have been attacked. And tonight, I have the governorship candidate of the SDP in Kogi State, Mr. Multala Ajaka. He joins us live here in our studio. Thank you so much, Mr. Ajaka. Thank for you very much, Mr. Shem. The election is just a few days ago. I mean, a yeah. few days away. Are you ready? Very much ready. Oh, you are in Abuja. I understand that you went to the police headquarters today. Yes, uh, went there to protest. Although I was in, a, I was built to have a rally in Ayangba today. I was supposed to be in Ayangba yesterday night, 
But uh, fortunately, I have appointment with the American envoy this morning because I didn't know. I thought that the meeting has been postponed. So I have to share with my meeting, uh, my rally in Ayangba. So only for us to wake up this morning, see the attacks. What really happened? We don't just know. At least, like I've been saying, the problem of the state has been the state governor and the state, the state governor. Now he has co-opted the commissioner of police, Mr. Petra Danoha, the director of DSS Kogi State, Mr. Tosin, and the commander, Nigerian Navy, NNS Lugard, Brigadier Ajulu, under which uh, this commander, Achilles, they work. They are the one arranging these attacks. You can see the vehicles. So the, the civil defense people that they use there, they are not in Kogi State, they are not from Kogi State. They are in Kogi State for the election. The commissioner of police went to pick them. So this particular event they are talking about, which part of Kogi State did it happen? Ayangba, in the Kina local government. In the Kina local government. And the Kina has been a hotbed of violence in the election. Very, mm -hmm. It's a very sensitive area during elections in Kogi State. Now, this is your home of the DG of your campaign, isn't it? Yes, and that is the place I normally stay whenever I'm in the Kina. That's why I, 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 I live there too. I shot to between Kina and Ayangba. They thought that I'm there. Their target is to get me assassinated, myself, the DG, and the former APC Zona Vice Chairman, uh, Mr. Ahmed Atta. That was their target. Why do you think that you are uh, a target of assassination? Why? Of course, because you know it's because... These are heavy, witty allegations. Yes, that is what your is planning. How do you know he's the guy? I know because, because he, 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 he said he wanted us dead or alive. Is that what he said? Yes. Where did he hear him say so? Ah, Mr. Sheung, let them take me to court and I'll give them the details. I have the audio tape. Let them take me to court. Then I'll but if you are able to produce such Mr. Sheung, on, on this. You know, you know, this is a family television, one, and we are guided by, I by, the, rules, I always by, 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 by rules and guidelines of our profession. Uh, if you say anything in, in, in a political term and language, that is acceptable. But you know that when you make heavy allegations in criminal nature, you must be able to stop. Okay, let, 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 and let, that's what I'm asking. Let me, you let, can let, do let, that. let me let me make you let me clarify something. For instance, now, as a law enforcement agent, you are going to arrest a suspect, an alleged suspect now, somebody that you say is a terrorist, and you know this person you are coming to arrest have legal security personnel protecting him. Under normal circumstances, what are you supposed to do? You come there and disarm the officers on duty there and tell them, I want your principal. Is that what you're supposed to do? But this one, they came in as criminals. As they are coming... What, what time of the day was this? 3 a.m., between 3, 4, 3, 3 to 4 a.m. In the middle of the night? Yes! So you as I should in. So you were supposed to be there? Yes! Why were you not there? Like I said, no, I, I turned back because of my, my appointment with the American envoy today. That's why I have to postpone to the rally. So, but my people have already gone in advance. So they thought I'm still there. What they want to do, uh, you look at this compound. Uh, this kind of compound, that way you have terrorists. Yeah, you have criminals. So this is a lie. I keep saying, the problem of Nigerian democracy and Kogi State is Governor Ayabelo. Why? Is it because of your personal issue? He's the one issue sponsoring all these things. It's not a personal, personal issue. He's the one sponsoring all this problem in the state. He's, he governs the state. Do you think that he will want to intentionally? Because he wants to force a successor on the people of Kogi State. And he wants to intimidate people from voting. And I assure you, by Saturday this weekend, by the grace of God, our people will come out and they will vote massively. Because we have given the list of those I have bought guns for, to the federal government. And they will investigate. Don't worry. Generally shall tell. Now, let me, let me ask you again. In all of Because this, whoever he kills today, he will not go free. He will not go free. Now, because under this, under this government, more than 40 people are missing in, in, in Central. And these people, everybody knows, this Akeleze, the Navy guy, the Special Force, he's the one behind these people that are missing. The same thing in Kogi East. They let, the same guy led the squad to Ejule to assassinate one, one, uh, one Kabiru's uh, Bala, who was an ally of Governor Yabelo. But when the guy get to Abuja here during the presidential primary, he voted for Tinibu. When he came back, 
when he called, get to the time of the primary, he said, no, he cannot continue with the able again that he's supporting another person. That's where the problem started. So once you're against him, they'll go after you to get you eliminated. That's why most of the people that are supporting the governor that are in the, that, that, that are in the state, they are afraid to come out. But by Saturday, by Saturday, by the grace of God, they will express their right. Governor Yayabelo is not on the ballot. Is he? He's not. Why do but, you think, I mean, you keep saying that he's after your life, he wants to kill you, yes. he wants to assassinate you. To what end would that be? Because he knew, he knew that there's no way he will go in this election and be successful. He knows. Because the people of the state are tired of his tyranny. They're tired. You know that they, they cannot express it. If you go to central, the same thing. Okay, look at uh, the newly uh, sworn in senator from the central, um, uh, Senator Natasha. He went on a condolence. He instructed the palace to lock her out. What kind of governance is that? How do you have the... Do, are, uh, uh, what? Uh, look, it was on the television everywhere. She couldn't access the palace. And you are assured, I mean, you, you have evidence to back the fact that it was the governor who instructed. Yes, that's what uh, I was told by the senator. Now, in all of this, let me ask you, because the lives and the properties and the livelihoods of the people of Kogi State are paramount in all of it because you are seeking their votes. What are you telling them that makes you so confident that you can win this election? I have the backing of the people. No, democracy, democracy is not a rocket science. Election that you win, you know. You feel it from the pulse of the people. It is so glaring in the state that the people of the state won't change. They don't want anything to, to do with Governor Ayabelo anymore. Majority of the people of the state. There's some very few people that they are armed them that are causing problems in Kogi State. You see small young, young, small young, young boys. I give them guns. If you go to the Kena Abocho, we well, have given them this list. The federal government know these people. We well, have given them the list of all these guys that have given that have been giving guns. They have guns in their place. So and in, I'm sure after the election, now so they, in Kogi the State, government will go after them. So in Kogi State now there's a stockpile of arms and ammunition. Yes. And you, yes. are, you are aware of this? Yes. You know where they, these people are? They display are? it. They display it. In broad daylight? Yes. Now, in all of this, because uh, I spoke with uh, former Deputy Governor uh, Yemi Awuni, who thinks that there is a strong chance of Usman Ododo winning the election. And he doesn't give you and any other of the candidates a chance. He, he doesn't think that you are in the race to win. With all due respect to the person of uh, Uncle Awoni, he's just a newcomer in ABC. So, uh, whatever he say, he's expected to say so. So I leave it at that. So, give us an understanding, empirically and scientifically, have you been able to gauge the opinion and the views of the people of Kogi State that gives you that confidence because you said they are with you. How many of them are with you? Let me give you a, a good example. I'm not tormenting anybody. If you are strong in an election, you don't need to fight. Ayabelo is fighting everybody. This house that I went to this morning to attack, the guy is a non businessman, he's a DG of my campaign. He's not a violent person. He has, he's not a criminal. But they went there this morning to attack his house. As I'm talking to you now, my deputy DG, a new media, is in their custody. This guy is an American, is, is UK based. He came proposing because of this election. He contested for Senate in the last election and went back and came because of this November election. If, I, will, I will show you the picture now, the way they, they, they treated him as a common criminal there. Officers, he's only with boxer in, in police custody there. This is the kind of person you call a terrorist. Because the allegations that are coming from the APC is that you are the one, in fact, behind all of these attacks and this violence, that you are, in fact, the violent person. How do you convince the people 
that you are not. Hey, Mr. Shen, you know, you are a, 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 a known journalist. You know, I've, I, I've told you before on this platform that in all my life, I've never had any police case. In all my life. How do you define a violent person? But you know, since Yaya Bello became governor of the state, he has always attacked virtually every opponent of each. I'm not the first person. How do you refer to me as a violent person? I don't have, I'm, I'm not having anybody. Have you ever seen anybody that's arrested that's associated with me that's carrying a gun? But if you go to the Kina now, you see people, young people in Abocho, in Odu, in uh, Iale Axis, carrying guns, AK-47, brought the light. We're just lucky the military came in, then most of these guys disappear. Nah. Because they could not use the thug again, that's why they are coming now with this Mr. Kelezi, the Navy guy. But those who do not give you a chance in, in this election, if you think that you can win, how many local government do you think you can muscle up? Uh, Shen, it's not for me to disclose my winning formula on this platform. 11-11 shall tell. If Yayabelo and his candidate know they are strong, they should stop attacking the people of Kogi State. Are you able to... As I'm talking to you now, the CP have intel. They arrange people to want to attack SDP supporter in Koton Karfi. The heavy allegation. I'm the police, you, I just had the the police is supposed to protect the people. So, and when you are in saying this that attack the... today, they, 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 three police officers were killed by this Akeleze and his gang. Well, just make that report to the first headquarters, to the IG. What did the IG say? Yes, no, 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 so of course, they're going to look into it. Of course, that's what you hear. But I'm sure they will not sweep, you, sweep this under the carpet. Because the people they kill, they are, they are personnel. Are you afraid to go around for campaigns? Afraid of who? No, 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 no. I've never, I've never been a coward all my life. I've never been a coward all my life. Should you lose this election, how would that make you feel? I'm not going to lose by the grace of God. This election, I'm going to win. There are equally... Because I know I have the support of our people. I have the support of the people of Kogi State. And they, are, they believe in me, and they are going to vote for me coming Saturday. There are equally very strong candidates in this race. You have a Dino Melai of the PDP. You have uh, Honorable Abejide of the ADC. You have uh, um, uh, Olayin Kaburama of the AA. You have Usman Ododo of the APC. In all of these, all of you are jostling for the votes of the people of Kogi State. And you think that you can come well and above all of this in... Uh, in a state where SDP does not really have any local government, does not control any federal constituency, any senatorial seats, what uh, political uh, base are you able to boast to be able to hold sway? It is people that make up a party. The strength of a political party is determined by the numbers of people that are in that party. Today, Labour Party command massive followership because I'm, I, today, SDP command massive followership because I'm there. Yeah. I'll take you back. You know, I was trying to give you an illustration of what happened in Ondo State between Agagu, late Agagu, and uh, Olusha Gumemeko of Labour Party. That's what I was thinking before I mentioned Labour Party. So. If you remember, it's the same movement that took Agagu out. Labour Party has no structure in Ondo State. But when the people that make things happen and those they come together and using uh, His Excellency Mimiko as the arrowhead, they're able to uproot Ag late Agago and his, and his group. The same thing is going to happen in Kogi State. The people of Kogi State are tired of Governor Ayabelo because he has over intimidated them. So let me ask you isn't this election supposed to be about issues? And the values the candidates want to impact on the people of the state should they win the election. What values and what issues or what are the benefits that the people of Kogi State would benefit if they elect Muritala Ajaka as a as their governor? I've always, I've always said that in my manifesto. That one, we are going to change the course of governance in Kogi State. Another thing, 
One of the major problems we're having in Kogi State is the issue of infrastructure. I have told them, when I come, I'm going to set up Kogi Construction Corporation that will go into the infrastructure decree we have, that we're having in the state. Virtually every road in the state now is in the bad, uh, it's not, uh, not motorable. And only, when we come to the agricultural sector, while we're growing up as a kid in my village, there's this people called the agriculture extension officer, though it was not Belo that took them off. The government before Belo took them off circulation. We want to bring back those agriculture extension officers to guide our local peasant and farmers. We want to empower our women. We want to end percentage salary. One of the major problems we're having in Kogi State today is this issue of percentage salary. The local government staff, in fact, they don't know how much the federal government, the state government is owing them. If you receive 30% today, the, the following month might be 20%. The month after the following month might be 15%. I mean, the, the problems are enormous. I mean, and as a governor, should you be elected, you will have priority areas. What would you like to be known for? Should you be elected governor of Kogi State? And how would you like Kogi State to look uh, as to the rest of the nation? If, if, you, if you understand. That's why I told you, I put it in a single sentence. And if I become, when I become the governor of Kogi State, I'm going to change the course of governance. What do I simply mean? Things will be done the way they ought to be done. We're having this problem in Kogi State because we're running a disjointed government. There is no policy coloration. Everything is done haphazardly. That's not where we are. And by the grace of God, from day one, we know one of our major problem is infrastructure. We have to open up virtually the major towns in our state. Once that is done, the civil servant we must take care of them. Because if somebody work, he must be paid. Let's anchor on this note, uh, and this is, uh, like I like I forgot to tell you, yeah. among those that were killed this morning are three policemen that are legally posted to the resident. And this is what the police are, in fact, saying, and i like your response in 30 seconds, please. They say, based on a series of credible intels on the repeated recurrent incidences of violence in Kogi State's and East Senatorial District, which recently led to an attack on the police team and the summing and snatching of one AK-47 rifle from one police uh, man. They said early this morning, a special joint operation involving the Nigerian Police Department of State Services and Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps was ca uh, carried out a building, uh, carried out on building where political thugs are being housed by political parties. And during the condone and search operation, the team, even after identifying themselves, came under serious gunfire, and in response, three of the political thugs were gunned down, and the two, two AK-47 rifles recovered by two members of the team sustained gunshot injuries, and seven suspects arrested. I hope the officer who issued the statement will defend himself before police have his commission. Because the, the people killed are serving police officers. I hope. That's going to tell you the judge issued to give him this statement, they put his name there. I, I doubt if that officer whose name appeared there is aware of this statement. They only put his name there. Is if he, not, is ah, the police as I'm in Kogi State. That's what I'm telling you. Ah, it's a non knowledge, it's a non fact that the man who's the, the, the cops in the, in the mortuary had the officers detailed to secure mm -hmm. the house. We, we need to go now. So, going forward, what would you say to the people of Kogi? As elections are here, uh, just uh, seconds. What I'm telling our people, they should, not, they should not be afraid at all. They should be ready, should be geared up to come out on Saturday and exercise their franchise and vote out Yabelo and his group. Right. Because the Yabelo and his group are a problem in Kogi State. Muritala Ajaka, SDP governorship candidate in Kogi State. Thank you so much indeed for your time. I wish you the very best. Please stay alive and stay safe. Thank you. I'm so alive. Much. Yeah, I cannot kill me. <laughs> But that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm sure I'll keep my Bye for now.